Breeze Fab Rear Shock Tower Reinforcements for AE86. And we're gonna weld these guys in right now. Another really cool product from Breeze Fab. These are weld in rear shock tower reinforcements. Historically, there's been this rumor that, especially if you're going true rear coilover, this part of the body was not designed to hold the weight of the vehicle and that it actually needs a reinforcement exactly like that. And I'm sure a lot of you guys from the old Club 4 AG days have seen that red Corolla where this guy's completely busted through and you can see the shock hanging up into the trunk. Fast forward to 2021 and two big coilover companies that have heavy development into this chassis both say you should absolutely be fine on true rears and the stock strut towers. It's recommended but not needed to reinforce the rear strut towers if going true rear coilovers. So this coupe is on annex suspension. I actually have the rear shocks out right now. But just to show you guys, it's the traditional divorce setup. But I imagine the customer thought it'd be a good idea just to reinforce the strut towers anyway. I mean, plus they look great. <laughs> Again, really cool that this is a weld-in design. With the kit, you also get this tool. So, that tool goes right where the shock shaft would go. And then, helps you more precisely locate where to weld in the reinforcements. Pretty cool. Thanks Breeze Fab. So here's everything you get in the kit from Breeze Fab. A shock tower reinforcement for one for each side. You get the locating tool, very fancy sticker, and then the most comprehensive sheet of instructions. Ryan, the founder and owner of Breeze Fab, is currently a welding inspector. And you can tell by how well these instructions are written that Ryan is a very skilled and seasoned welder himself. All right, let's get these guys welded in. So I have the shocks out of the car. The next step, I am going to fit these guys and then mark around the circumference where I'm going to remove paint and sealant, anything that's gonna contaminate my weld. And it looks like we want to remove at least one inch in all directions around where we mark. So why don't we go ahead and do that? All right, well, obviously I haven't scraped seam seal in a long time because this is a lot more labor intensive than I remember. You can see my Sharpie outline around the circumference of the weld-in mounts. So I know to grind a inch around from where I marked. And this is the other tower that I prepped. I use gasket scrapers to scrape off um, all the seam seal. And then finally a wire wheel. Get this guy down to bare metal. Yeah, check it out. So yeah, we'll have a nice clean bare metal to weld onto. In the instructions, it says you may need to slightly grind these to form fit to the body, which is, you know, to be expected. Every one of these isn't gonna be the same, but you know, overall for being kind of a universal piece, these, this fit is really good. Also considering sheet metal from the 80s. So yeah, I'll go ahead and continue on the other side to get the other side down to bare metal. And when we come back, hopefully we'll be able to weld. Ugh, all right. So as is tradition, running out of daylight here at the auto house, but let's see where we're at. There was tons of debris in here, vacuumed that out first. Got the surrounding area to bare metal on both sides. I'm gonna take some acetone, wipe down the bare metal, check the final fit on these, see if I need to grind or clearance these. Acetone on these guys. I'm gonna set up the welder. <clears throat> we should be ready to burn these in. Yeah, really quick, no matter what, you're welding on the car, you always wanna disconnect the negative side of the car since the welder is gonna use the chassis as the ground now. And then also um, acetone, not brake clean. If you weld on top of brake clean, it's actually gonna create a poisonous gas and kill you. So yeah, acetone, not this stuff. Don't use this. <laughs> Got my surfaces prepped and acetoned. Just one more time, I am absolutely amazed. Look at this fitment. After I cut all the seam seal off, this thing fits absolutely great. Cannot believe it. All right, I had to go take a break. I'm actually having a pretty rough, <laughs> pretty frustrating welding day right now. So I'm not gonna go too close because it looks like rocket up. But uh, one pro tip on a coupe, the back seats fold down. I think that's the only way I'm gonna get to this back side. So I'm gonna be welding from inside the car. Got my welding blanket so we don't burn up the customer's interior. Fire extinguisher at the ready. And then we got people next door so I can yell. Let me finish up the driver's side and then hopefully the passenger side goes much better. Game plan. I have some seam seal. 
So once I do the finished welding seam seal, then we'll lay down paint. But yeah, besides my welding, these things are looking great so far. All right, definitely not my best welding day ever, but got them in. This tool, by the way, was phenomenal. This was always like a good sanity check if this thing was even or not, even when I'd have a gap somewhere. As long as this guy was as centered as possible and could fit in both the plate and then also the, on the body side. I'd occasionally pick this up and down just like that. Ooh, still hot. So yeah, the winner of today is absolutely this alignment tool. Thanks for including this breeze fab. As is tradition, it's getting late and I'm starving. So we're gonna take one more break. I'm gonna wire brush and acetone my welded areas, get some seam sealer on there. And once we got the seam sealer on there, we'll come back. A few moments later. All right, got seam seal on the welds on both of those reinforcements. We'll let them cure for 24 hours. And uh, Michael should be back tomorrow. So I'll let him mask off and paint those guys. But before we call it night, why don't we take a look? Almost like they belong there the next day. Day two, uh, I saved the task I didn't want to do for this guy. Yeah, I did. What are we doing? Uh, what did you do? We uh, primed it first, and then we uh, added our spray paint. Good yeah. job, man. Yeah. The owner wasn't too picky about the color, but that was just gonna bug the out of me if if like that was white or black and then the interior is like a different color right yeah so yeah that's great this paint uh, matched you know as close as we can so that's great so yeah we'll let this dry peel back the masking and we'll get the interior back in here all right so here we are painted final product big shout out to breeze fab for making parts like this supporting the Corolla community. Yeah, highly recommend this product. For more cool bespoke Corolla parts, make sure to check it out, breezefab.com.